Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern, and this week we're taking a look at a modern deck called Dino Flare. It's a graveyard-based deck built around Soul Flare, a 6-mana 4-4 with Delve, and whenever you exile a creature while delving the Soul Flare, then uh, Soul Flare will also gain the keywords of the creatures you've exiled. So let's say you've exiled a creature that had flying, then Soul Flare will also have flying, and the same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. So that's a lot of keywords that the Soul Flare can potentially have, and that's kind of the goal of the deck. Try and put as many keywords in the graveyard as possible, and then make a giant Soul Flare that's going to be very hard to deal with. So that's one of the game plans of the deck. The other game plan involves a whole lot of dinosaurs, which of course also are part of the keyword package for Soul Flare. But one dinosaur in particular is Gishoth Sun's Avatar, 8 mana for a 7-6 with Trample, Vigilance and Haste. And when Gishoth deals combat damage to a player, you get to reveal that many cards from the top of your library, and then you can put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them in play. So that's a very powerful effect. And the way we're trying to cheat Gishath into play is thanks to Gorio's Vengeance, which is a 2-mana instant that lets us return a legendary creature card from our graveyard in play, give it haste, and then exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So as part of our graveyard deck, we're also trying to put Gishath in the graveyard and then reanimate it with Gorio's Vengeance. And of course, putting Gishath in the graveyard still works out for Soul Flare as well. So those are the two main game plans of the deck, and of course to support Gishoth we also have a whole bunch of dinosaurs, so that we're more likely to reveal a dinosaur after attacking with Gishoth. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our one drops, where we have four copies of Faithless Looting, a very important card in a deck. For one mana we get to draw two cards and then discard two cards, so it helps us put our keywords in the graveyard, and also helps us dig for the missing combo pieces like Soul Flare or perhaps a Gorio's Vengeance. And we can also flash Faithless Looting back for 3 mana from the graveyard to do it all over again. Then we have our 4 copies of Gorio's Vengeance to go along with Gishoth. There's also other legendary creatures we could reanimate, like Hazoret or Zetalpa, but Gishoth is the main target for Gorio's Vengeance. And if we do happen to reanimate a Gishoth with Gorio's Vengeance, and with the attack reveal another Gishoth, it's certainly beneficial to put that second copy of Gishoth in play, even though it's legendary, just because then the original Gishoth does not get exiled, but instead goes to the graveyard, and then you can reanimate it once again, or perhaps delve it away with a Soul Flare. Next up we have 4 copies of Cathartic Reunion, very similar to Faithless Looting, helps us discard our keyword creatures, and helps us dig further into our deck. Next up we have two copies of Sylvan Caryatid, a nice 2 mana 0-3 with Defender and Hexproof, and we can use it as a mana creature. Most of the time we will just be discarding the Sylvan Caryatid to put Hexproof in our graveyard, which is very relevant for Soul Flare. Next up we have another graveyard enabler in the form of Grizzly Salvage, a 2 mana instant that makes us reveal the top 5 cards of our library. We can choose a creature or land from among them and put the rest into our graveyard. So of course the main target we're looking for with Grizzly Salvage is copies of Soul Flare, but if we can just put more keyword creatures in the graveyard, that's also fine. Next up we have two copies of Vampire Nighthawk, a 3 mana 2-3 with Flying, a Death Touch and Lifelink, so a nice set of keywords, and Vampire Nighthawk is still just hard castable in this deck for 3 mana, so unlike some of the other keyword creatures that you're never gonna hard cast in this deck, Vampire Nighthawk is still a fine 3-drop in this deck. Then we have two copies of Hazret the Fervent, a 4 mana 5-4 with Indestructible and Haste, so another nice set of keywords. She can't attack or block unless you have one or fewer cards in hand, but her ability to pay 3 mana, discard a card and deal 2 damage to an opponent also helps you empty your hand, and is also a useful discard outlet in case you're stuck with a few expensive dinosaurs in hand that you can't cast anyways. So Hazard is certainly very hard castable in this deck at just 4 mana, and she can just win the game by herself, and she's also legendary so you can get her back with Gorio's Vengeance for whatever that's worth. Next up we have two copies of Karen Wanderer, a 5 mana 4-4, four four, that's a changeling, so it has all creature types at all times, which means that the Wanderer is also a dinosaur, which is relevant if you're trying to reveal it with Gishoth. And the Wanderer is very similar to Soul Flare, it works slightly differently in that 
If there's a creature card with flying in a graveyard, the Wanderer has flying, and the same is true for fear, first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, land walk, lifelink, protection, reach, trample, shroud, and vigilance. So as you'll notice, some of the keywords on the Wanderer differ from the keywords on Soul Flare, just because the Wanderer got printed more than 10 years ago, so the common keywords back then differ from the common keywords now. So on the Wanderer you'll see stuff like fear, land walk, protection, and shroud, which aren't as common nowadays. So that actually makes the Wanderer a bit weaker than it could be, since we're missing out on important keywords like indestructible and hexproof, which are not present on the Wanderer, but it's still a nice synergistic creature, that's also dinosaur for Gishath. Then of course our four copies of Soul Flare, which is the build around card in the deck, and the one you always want to have in your opening hand. Then we get to some of our more expensive dinosaurs that we're looking to put into our graveyard or reveal with Gishath. We've got four copies of Carnage Tyrant, a 6 mana 7-6, can be countered and has Trample and Hexproof, so Hexproof here is the important keyword. And then we also have four copies of Zatalpa, Primal Dawn, another legendary creature that you can get back with Glorious Vengeance, and you get a 4-8 with Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample and Indestructible, so a nice set of keywords to get with Soul Flare. And then uh, last but not least, we have our four copies of Gishath, that's great with Soul Flare and also with Glorious Vengeance. Then going over the mana base, we have a total of five fast lands, four copies of Blackleaf Cliffs, one copy of Blooming Marsh, which come into play untapped if they're one of our first three lands, total of eight fetch lands, four Bloodstay Mire and four Verdants, which are also important if we're trying to play an early Soul Flare, since the fetch lands going into the graveyard helps with Delve. A few basic lands we can get to also help us play around Blood Moon, two swamps and one forest, and four shock lands, overgrown tomb, stomping ground, and two blood crypt, which are the most important shock lands in the deck. Then going over the sideboard, we have one engineered explosives as a versatile removal spell that can also deal with graveyard hate cards, two ancient grudge against artifacts, four brutality against burn decks can also bring it in against control decks, also helps us discard cards from our hand to set up soul flare or glorious vengeance. 3 Abrupt Decays as another versatile creature removal spell that can also deal with graveyard hate cards. And finally 4 copies of Lingering Souls which we can bring in in the more grindy games, alongside 1 copy of Godless Shrine, so we can maybe also hard cast the Lingering Souls besides flash it back from the graveyard. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and the sand seems okay, we've got a Looting and a Reunion to help us dig for a Soul Flare. Opponent with Blackleaf Cliffs into... Thoughtseize, so that might take away one of our reunion or looting. Does take the looting, can still flash it back on three. And there's a Gishoth, that's not a bad one here. Play Bloodsamire, get a Blood Crypt end of turn. So next turn we can discard Zetalpa and Gishoth to the reunion. There's our confidence, so we are up against the Jund deck most likely. Another reunion is not bad. We do have to be aware of Liliana of the Veil making us sacrifice a creature since if Soul Flare is our only creature, she could be able to make us sacrifice it. And we did pick up a Gorious Vengeance here, so Gishath might be able to connect next turn. Opponent revealed Bloodbraid Elf off the top with Dark Confident, so they took four. Opponent gets in for two, so we're hoping our opponent taps out for something here, they do not. So they could be holding up a Terminate, which would make this Gorious Vengeance pretty weak. On the other hand, if we wait with uh, Gorious Vengeance, our opponent could draw into, let's say, another Inquisition or Thoughtseize and take away the Gorious Vengeance. I think I don't want to run at the risk of running Gorious Vengeance into a Terminate here, since our opponent did leave up 3 mana. Next turn they're likely to tap out for Bloodbraid Elf, and then we can maybe go for the Gorious Vengeance. So now I think I'll Reunion, looking for maybe a Soul Flare. I think that's fine here. Let's reunion. Discarding Swamp and Carnage Tyrants. And alright, there's a Soul Flare. Play Blackleaf Cliffs. Say go. And next turn we can both Gorious Vengeance and maybe Soul Flare. Opponent Ventures end of turn. And if we do go for Soul Flare, we definitely want a Gorious Vengeance first. In case our opponent does have removal for the Gishoth. Then we can still exile Gishath with Soul Flare. Opponent with Scavenging Ooze. That's unfortunate here. That can exile our Gishath. Confident gets in. Well, opponent lets us untap, so they might not expect 
Soul Flare as much as Gorius Vengeance here. So I think we just Soul Flare right now, and then we can get rid of Gishoth and Setalpa, among other things. We can also get Carnage Tyrant. The only problem then is Lilian of the Veil uh, could still make a sacrifice of Soul Flare, but uh, not much we can do about that, I'm afraid. So yeah, let's Soul Flare it up. Exiling Gishoth, Setalpa, Carnage Tyrants, and I guess a land. Opponent fetches now. Soul Flare also has Hexproof and Indestructible, so I think the only way your opponent can get rid of Soul Flare is with a Liliana. So let's attack. Opponent might even have to chum block with the Ooze, otherwise they might die to their own confidence. Opponent takes it. So they're down to two. So I think we just go Verdant and then maybe end of turn Grizzly Salvage. Don't really want to cast a looting here since we don't want to discard any creatures to give the opponent fuel for the Ooze. So I'm just going to let them untap here. The Ooze might exile the Faithless looting. All right, they're going to terminate their own confident. I guess it also works. So that way they don't die. Sure. So hoping they don't have Liliana of the Veil here. All right, there she is. Makes a sacrifice Soul Flare. Opponent has one green mana up, so they can still exile one thing. So let's say we find a Gishoth with a Salvage, they can still exile it in response to the Vengeance. I think I'll get a basic Forest. And then Salvage. Alright, looks like we found another Soul Flare, so that's nice. Alongside Carnage Tyrants and a few lands. So we can give the Soul Flare Hexproof. Unless they exile the Carnage Tyrant right now. But that gives us the opportunity to Faithless Looting into a Gishoth. They are exiling the Carnage Tyrants. So let's untap. And there's Hazrat as well. So now the Soul Flare will have haste. So let's looting first. Alright, so we just get to have it all here. Discard Gishoth and Hazrat. I guess, uh, unfortunately, we can't both Soul Flare and Gorius Vengeance because our land comes into play tapped. But our opponent will still be forced to Chum Block, I guess. Let's see. We can actually get Flying and Haste as well to just kill our opponent outright. That might be better here. I uh, guess it doesn't matter if we take Hazrat or Gishoth then. So let's discard Vampire Nighthawk and Gishoth. And then Soul Flare. Exiling Vampire Nighthawk, Gishoth, and some lands. And go to combat. Attack our opponents. And that should do it. Alright, there we go. Managed to beat the Liliana, making a sacrifice and the ooze. So how do we approach this matchup? What Graveyard Hate can our opponent bring in? They can bring in Craftdigger's Cage and Nile Spellbomb. Those are the common ones. And then of course they have their main deck Scavenging Oozes already. Lingering Souls is a nice addition here to beat Lilian of the Veil making a sacrifice. And Abrupt Decay can both kill the Ooze and maybe some of the Graveyard Hate cards. So those are the cards I'm interested in. What don't we want? I think Gorius Vengeance gets a lot worse with uh, Scavenging Ooze since they just need to keep up one green mana. Scavenging was not as effective against Soul Flare since we can just fill our graveyard very quickly. So I could see taking out a Vengeance. Then we can maybe shave one of our lands to make room for the Godless Shrine. Then I don't expect a Blood Moon from this opponent, so we can probably take out the Basic Forest. Bring in Godless Shrine for Lingering Souls. And then I think we want to make room for the Abrupt Decay, as it can solve a lot of problems. I think the Wanderer can probably go one of our weaker cards. And then I guess a Vampire Nighthawk, since that just dies to a Lightning Bolt as well, if we were just trying to hardcast it. Explosives could also be reasonable, but I don't think we want to go overboard. So now we just have uh, Soul Flare as our main win condition, and otherwise we can just rely on Lingering Souls. Maybe we can get up to 6 mana to hardcast a Carnage Tyrant as well. And of course Hazard can also win the game by herself. This hand looks okay. Opponents might be able to take Faithless Looting, but any second land lets us cast a Reunion. Hopefully 
They do not take the looting, so we can find our second land. Opponent mulliganing pretty hard, maybe to find their graveyard hate cards. It's gonna be Swamp into Thoughtseize, probably taking away the looting. Alright, another Carnage Tyrant is not exactly what we need. So let's hope to find a second land soon. There's a Blood Crypt tapped, so no play besides maybe another Hand Disruption spell. Bone just says go. Alright, another looting will do. And alright, did not find a land. I think we'll just discard one Carnage Tyrant and the Gishath here. Opponent could also just play a Liliana and start plussing, but that would help us with Hazoret a little bit. Opponent does nothing instead. Alright, Stomping Ground means we can Cathartic Reunion here if we want to, which I guess is slightly better, or we can just Grizzly Salvage. But we don't have double black yet, should we find a Soul Flare? So I think we want to Reunion discarding Carnage Tyrant and Gishoth. Opponent could also be setting up a Nile Spell Bomb here, but then we still have the Hazret as a backup plan. Alright, Lingering Souls is a nice one, and we can fetch the Godless Shrine here. So that's our plan B. There's a Dark Confidence. And a Blackleaf Cliffs. Uh, it's a little awkward that if we want to fetch Godless Shrine to cast the Lingering Souls, this will come into play tapped. Guess we could just looting discarding the Lingering Souls and then flash it back. That's also reasonable. Yeah, maybe we'll do that instead here. That way we can still play the Cliffs here. Alright, more Grizzly Salvages and Reunions. I think Grizzly Salvage is more useful here in finding the Soul Flare, so we'll discard Reunion and Lingering Souls. And then play Blackleaf Cliffs, flash back Lingering Souls. Say go. Bone's gonna terminate one of them. Reveals Bloodbraid Elf. But they don't have any green mana currently. But there's a Verdant. Alright. There's a Bloodbraid Elf incoming that's gonna start pressuring us. But if we can Grizzly Salvage into a Soul Flare, we should be pretty good. Finds a Lightning Bolt. Probably gonna kill the Spirit Token so they can attack with the Confidence. Yep. So we'll get attacked for five. Opponent only has one card left in hand though. So I think we want to fetch first for the Godless Shrine. Although then we can't play two Grizzly Salvages this turn. So that's a little awkward. Also kind of want to preserve our life total. So fetching an untapped Godless Shrine seems kind of poor. So I think we'll start with Grizzly Salvage. See if we can maybe find a Soul Flare. Then we can fetch Basic Swamp. Alright, there's a Soul Flare. And now we can fetch a Basic Swamp. And let's cast Soul Flare, and let's see, we can give it Hexproof, Haste, Trample, and Vigilance. And I guess that's about it. Just have Carnage Tyrants and uh, Gishoths in the graveyard currently. So let's exile a Gishoth, a Carnage Tyrant. And we could exile some more creatures to play around opposing Scavenging Ooze, but our opponent only has a one green mana, so they wouldn't be able to gain too much life off of it. And uh, I guess we just get rid of a few lands then. Or we can take Thermogoyf into consideration. But uh, I don't think we can get rid of one card type altogether. So let's just get a few lands out of here. And yep, let's attack for four. We have Vigilance anyways. Bones at nine. And unless they have a Liliana, Soul Flare should be able to hold off their attackers here. Reveals Lightning Bolts. Alright. Not a Dark Confidence. Opponent's fully committing here. But they might just chum block with it. Although we do have Trample. So that's not going to work out too well. I guess they just want to block the Soul Flare. Which I guess that would work. Since we don't have Indestructible or Double Strike. So I guess the plan here is just Grizzly Salvage again. Try to find another Soul Flare. And I think I would rather Grizzly Salvage over Flashback Faithless Looting. And alright, we find another Hazard and a Nighthawk. I think we 
keep the Nighthawk since we can just cast that even though we know they have a Lightning Bolt in hand. Could also just get a land, I suppose. That might be better. And then here I think we just flashbang the Lingering Souls. And I don't think we want to attack with the Soul Flare. So yeah, let's flashback Lingering Souls. Play Bloodstain Mire, say go. And that's going to fetch, I think, our Godless Shrine, or we can get an Overgrown Tomb. Now the Soul Flare is protected from Liliana. Opponent's going to bolt our face. Put us to 9. And let's see what the Dark Confidence reveal. Tarmogoyf, that's a good one. And a Bloodstained Mire, so our opponent's down to 6. They can play a pretty big Tarmogoyf here. So they still have a Bloodstained Mire in hand that we know of. No great attacks for the opponents. I guess we already milled the Godless Shrine, so we can't get that. So I guess we'll take the Overgrown Tomb. Another Zatalpa is not too useful here. So here we can flash back a Looting or play a Grizzly Salvage. I think once again just playing the Grizzly Salvage is better since then we might find Lingering Souls or another Soul Flare. The advantage of Looting is that we can discard these Zatalpas, I suppose, which aren't doing much in our hand. But I think just finding Lingering Souls is good enough here. So let's cast Grizzly Salvage. And that finds... Lingering Souls, nice. And then Kishath, Zetalpa, Blood Crypt. We'll take the Blood Crypt. And then we can attack for two in the air with the Lingering Souls. If we wanted to play around Surgical, we should have just flashed back the Lingering Souls right away, I suppose. Opponent takes it. And let's flash back another Lingering Souls. And just play a Tamp Blood Crypt. We could have... Play the Blood Crypt untapped to also play the Carry Added to maybe empty our hand for Hazard. But I think this game is going to be decided by the Confident Flips and the Lingering Souls. Colagon's Command making us discard and dealing two to us. Alright, we'll discard the Satalpa. Pretty gladly, actually. Let's see what Dark Confident reveals. Liliana of the Veil, opponent down to one. And... Alright, Spell Spellbomb. And our opponent loses to their own Dark Confidence, so pretty interesting game here against Jund. Got pretty grindy and definitely saw the power of Lingering Souls here, putting those Flyers into play for free, essentially. So on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this is a decent hand. It relies a lot on Faithless Looting here to discard Gishath and Zetalpa. Opponent with Swamp Go. And their Soul Flare, alright, so this is a nice turn to Soul Flare with Indestructible... Trample, Vigilance, Double Strike, and so on. Setalpa and Gishath can go. Next turn, use our Fetch Land to get an Overgrown Tomb. And then we'll have four cards in the Graveyard, which is exactly enough for turn two Soul Flare. Bad Moon. Alright, put on some sort of Black Aggro deck, but uh, Bad Moon's also going to boost up our Soul Flare. Alright, let's Fetch up Overgrown Tomb. Play Soul Flare and hit our opponent for essentially 10 damage here. Thanks to Haste and Double Strike and the opponent's Bad Moon. So let's see if they have a Liliana of the Veil here. And they don't. Alright, we get to go to sideboarding. Uh, turn to win essentially. Up against what looks like a mono black aggro deck, I'm gonna assume. I'm not sure what sort of graveyard hate to expect. I don't think we want to sideboard too much unless we've seen more from the opponent's deck. Could preemptively bring in some number of abrupt decays or engineered explosives just to be able to answer potential graveyard hate cards. I think we just run it back for now. And this hand seems quite excellent as well. Once again have looting and soul flare alongside the Zatalpa, so we'll keep. And even reunions in case our opponent, let's say, plays an Inquisition or a Thoughtseize and takes away one of our key cards. Well, opponent starting out with Leyline of the Void is a worst case scenario since even in our sideboard we don't have a great answer to Leyline of the Void. And Swamp, and there's Gravecrawler, so 
We could almost just concede here since we don't have a great way of beating Leyline. Our best hope is maybe playing Sylvan Caryatid and then hard casting some of our creatures. I guess we'll give that a shot. Leyline is truly probably the best card in modern against our deck. So it's going to be hard beating that. Zetalpa is not going to do anything. And Soul Flare at 6 mana is also pretty hard to hard cast. So let's get rid of those. So what could have been a turn 2 Soul Flare is now halted by this Ley Line. At least we get to see more of the opponent's deck as well. Relentless Dead, so it looks like just a mono black zombie aggro deck. I guess we do have an answer to Leyline of the Void in Engineered Explosives if we have a Sylvan Carry Edit or, or Godless Shrine to Explosives on 4. That's an answer to Leyline. But when building the deck I said to myself, I'm fine losing to Leyline once in a while. Uh, so it looks like this is going to be one of those games. I guess here we can fetch up a Swamp. Play a Reunion. Discarding Soul Flare. And... I guess a looting. Alright, that doesn't do much. So cards we're looking for, I guess, are Hazorat, Vampire Nighthawk, maybe a Carnage Tyrant, but looks like now with this Death Baron pumping up all zombies, it's gonna be a pretty quick game. And there's a Carnage Tyrant, but we're just gonna be dead before we get to do anything. So let's uh, concede here. Go to a game 3, see if we can maybe make some adjustments. So Leyline of the Void is going to be hard to beat if our opponent just tries to mulligan for it, especially if they have 4 copies in their sideboard. So what can we do about it? Not much, we can hope that uh, we get to engineer explosives for 4. Could bring in Lingering Souls just to have a 3 mana make 2 spirit tokens, but I don't think that's going to win us a game. Brutality doesn't do much here besides maybe killing a zombie. But I think we just want to stick with our main game plan, hope our opponent doesn't have the ley line. And uh, yeah, go from there. And this hand is acceptable, we're missing discard outlets for Zetalpa and Carnage Tyrants, but we already have the two Soul Flares. And between the four Grizzly Salvage, Faithless Looting and Cathartic Reunion, we're pretty likely to find one of those before our opponent kills us here. I don't think mulliganing is going to help us too much here, so let's keep. And our opponent starts off with a ley line. So that's just going to be the game here. Alright, so we got our loss to ley line out of the way. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand is pretty bad. So let's go to 6. Alright, this is slightly better. And looting will definitely keep on top. It's a bit awkward that we're on the play, so we can't looting on turn 1. But I think we still want to keep it here. Play a fetch and we won't sacrifice it yet. So on turn 2 we'll have to decide between the salvage or the looting. Opponent looks to be on affinity, so this game's gonna be decided pretty quickly. And a Thoughtseize. Alright, I guess it could be Lantern Control instead. So Thoughtseize resolves. Probably gonna take the Soul Flare here, but then we're on the Grizzly Salvage plus Gordius Vengeance plan. Alright, they actually go for the Grizzly Salvage instead. Kind of makes sense, but uh, that's gonna make our Faithless Looting better. Let's fetch a Blood Crypt. And cast a Looting. And discard Gishoth. And I think we want to discard a land here in case they have an Inquisition or a Thoughtseize for the second Gorius Vengeance if we discard one. And then I guess we discard the basic Forest. And say go. And then next turn we can hit them with the Gorius Vengeance. So, unless they can drop an ensnaring bridge here, we should be good. Codex Shredders, their opponent clearly on the Lantern Control deck. Ghoul Caller as well. And opponent's gonna shred us, milling over a uh, Sylvan Carry Added. They're actually helping us a bit here. Let's get a tapped Overgrown Tomb. Untap. And uh, hit them with the Gorious Vengeance, I think over Soul Flare, just to try and get as many dinos in play as possible. Attack. And uh, hope to get lucky here. 
All right, we got uh, double Zetalpa Gishath, and we'll take all of them, since that way we get to put Zetalpa in our graveyard, which is useful for Soul Flare. And we also keep the new Gishath, since the old one would get exiled anyways. So now the old one's in our graveyard for Soul Flare. And uh, we have a new Gishath in play. And I kept the land in hand in case we need it for a Faithless Looting that we draw. So if they have Ensnaring Bridge, we're in trouble. If they don't, they're dead. Alright, there's the Ensnaring Bridge. So now I don't think we can still win. We've got some pretty large creatures. And uh, they can't really attack past the bridge. So our opponent had a very small window to find the bridge. They did. And now I don't think we can still win. So uh, let's concede and go to a game two. Where we do get to bring in a few nice cards against the Lantern deck. Got two Ancient Grudges, three Abrupt Decays, and Engineer Explosives. Could also go for the Lingering Souls to maybe sneak under the bridge, but I don't think that's a great plan. And then Collective Brutality is also not all that amazing. So I think we're mainly looking at these six cards. What do we take out is the question. Don't think the Wanderer is gonna be fast enough. I uh, don't think Lifelink really matters in this matchup. Indestructible and Hexproof is also not too relevant, so I guess we can take out Carnage Tyrant since at least the Talpa adds Double Strike, which is relevant. Alright, I think this makes sense. And we also have Hazrat, I guess, as an alternate win condition, so we weren't technically dead there, but uh, the Lantern deck was gonna find an answer to Hazrat, like a Pithing Needle at some point. This hand's very keepable, since we do have the Hazrat as another win condition, and then just need one Faithless Looting to enable the Soul Flare. So I'll keep, and I think I'll play a tapped Stomping Ground for now. Does shut off the option of a turn 2 Soul Flare, but we weren't gonna play a turn 2 Soul Flare anyways. Do want to play out our fetches while we can, but if our opponent plays a Lantern of Insight, we can use the fetch land to kind of control the top of our deck as well. So you kind of have to weigh Pithing Needle versus the Lantern of Insight, but given that we have a Hazrat, Pithing Needle is more likely to name Hazrat here anyways. Opponent with the Thought Seize might just take the Hazrat. Instead takes a Soul Flare. Alright, let's just run out to Sylvan. Opponent with double Glimmer Void, and there's a Pithing Needle. It's just gonna name Hazrat here. And yep, there we go. Can still attack for five, but the activated ability will not be able to kill our opponent if they have a bridge in play. Alright, so there's Gorius Vengeance, so all we need now is one of our discard effects, which we have a few of. So I guess here we can just play out the Hazrat by playing the Blood Crypts. We will have a pretty hard time emptying our hand to attack with Hazrat here, given that we can't really get rid of this Gishath easily. Pirate Spellbomb is fine. I guess we do have the carry added, so we can make white mana to hard cast Gishath. Opponent just cycles through a Spellbomb, and on triple Glimmer Void, so if we ever find an Ancient Grudge, our opponent's in trouble. Alright, there's a Cathartic Reunion. So now we get to Reunion, discarding Gishath and Bloodstained Mire. And, alright, there's an Abrupt Decay, but we're just gonna go ahead and Gorius Vengeance the Gishath if our opponent has a Surgical, so be it. Alright, that works. Let's go to combat. Let's see how many Dinos we can find. Alright, just as a Talpa, that's good enough. And then we'll play the Fetch Land to empty our hand. And we have Abrupt Decay for Ensnaring Bridge here. Ancient Stirrings. End of turn, I think we just get an Overgrown Tomb. Since we have these two green cards in hand, we want to cast. Opponent finds a Witchbane Orb. It doesn't do too much against us. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright. On to game three. Do we want to change anything? Don't think so. I'm fine leaving out the Wanderer and the Carnage Tyrant here. And this hand, unfortunately, doesn't have any lands in it. Would be great with the looting, the soul flare, and the explosives here. But without a land, I think it's a bit too risky to keep. 
opponent could just lock us out of drawing any more lands for the rest of the game, which would be kind of a disaster. Alright, we've got an Ancient Grudge, which is our best card in a matchup. And we get a Scry, Sylvan Karyadid can maybe fix our mana. So this is a keep. And Gishoth, I don't think we want here. Turn 1 Codex Shredder. They're gonna target us once again. And there's a Blooming Marsh. And I think we just play the Blooming Marsh here in case we need double black next turn for some reason. And a 2 life from Stomping Ground is probably not gonna matter too much. And there's Inquisition. Can take Ancient Grudge. Can still flash it back once. Takes the Gorius Vengeance instead. Interesting. We weren't really close to Gorius Vengeancing anything. And there's Lantern of Insight, which reveals Pithing Needle and Soul Flare. Let's see if they let us keep the Soul Flare. They do not. There's a Blackleaf Cliffs on top, which we do get to draw. All right. So we could just keep up Ancient Grudge. We could run out the Sylvan Caryatid here. I don't think Sylvan Caryatid does much for us, unless we maybe need to flash back a Faithless Looting. So I'm just going to say go, keep up the Ancient Grudge, and maybe end of turn use it on something. Opponent's going to mill with the Codex Shredder, mills the Faithless Looting. There's a Grizzly Salvage on top. And there's Inquisition which uh, can only take carry added or the Ancient Grudge, so let's just cast the Ancient Grudge. Opponent has another Lantern on top, so killing a Lantern doesn't accomplish too much. So we could just kill the Codex Shredder, so that they can't manipulate the top of our deck. Seems reasonable. And if we target the Lantern, our opponent could also sacrifice it to shuffle our deck if they don't want us to keep the Grizzly Salvage. Opponent takes carry added. So next turn we can flash back Ancient Grudge and cast Soul Flare. It's not a bad turn. Reunion on top. Could also flash back the Looting, discarding the Talpa to make our Soul Flare a bit more lethal. But I think a 4-4 is still okay here. And then we get to keep up Ancient Grudge, which seems relevant. Yeah, the other option I think is just flash back Looting, discarding the Talpa. Maybe something we draw. But I kind of like putting some pressure on the opponents. So let's delve away Sylvan, Soul Flare, Gorius Vengeance and Swamp, leaving Ancient Grudge and Looting. So we've got a 4-4 Hexproof, Grudge in the Graveyard, which we're mainly keeping to kill a bridge. Opponent sacrifices Lantern, targeting themselves, so they don't want to draw the Lantern. We will still be drawing Cathartic Reunion. Could have also considered not playing our land in case we want to discard it to the Cathartic Reunion that was on top of our deck. If we don't want to discard the Grizzly Salvage. There's Glimmer Void, but no artifact yet. Pithing Needle, that's fine. Names. Abandon Reason. <laughs> that's usually the play you make when uh, things aren't going too well. So we could flash back the Needle, kill the Glimmer Void. Then our opponent needs exactly land plus ensnaring bridge to still have a chance, I think. So I'm gonna just kill the needle here, get rid of the glimmer void. Should have uh, put a stop in the main phase so that the glimmer void would die right now. But I think we're still okay here. So let's attack for four. So now the glimmer void's just gonna go away at the uh, beginning of our end step, which is still good enough. And I think we just keep up grizzly salvage for now. Glimmer void goes away. Opponent now needs land plus ensnaring bridge, and end of turn we can grizzly salvage. And let's see what we find. Some lands, Kishath, Carnage Tyrants. Guess we'll just go for the overgrown tomb here. Probably gonna discard it to the reunion anyways. So let's reunion, discarding cliffs and Zatalpa. Alright, and Attack for four. And then I guess we can reunion discarding forest and bloodstain mire here. Alright, abrupt decay, another answer to bridge, which is our main concern. Opponent says go. Hazrat is also a nice one here. So let's attack for four. Play Hazret. I 
And I don't think we play out the land since we can discard it to a Faithless Looting. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, managed to beat a Lantern Control. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.